Hey guys, so I'm just recording this video to show the process of how I do genealogy, just kind of stream of consciousness as in there's not going to be any edits. It's just me showing what I do. Literally, I'm not going to take any extra time here. If you just want to see what I do, I might, um, I'll talk about it and uh, maybe it'll help. Maybe it'll help. So it's going to share screen and we will go from there. So over here, I'm with two ancestors, Ignacio Sanchez and Antonia Pedraza, seventh great grandparents. I'm trying to trace further back. So whenever I get into a, a line and I'm trying to trace further back, I always go to the last record that I have of them and I try to figure out how it's relevant. So from Ignacio Sanchez's standpoint, it's not giving me any information. It's just saying the spouse and the child, but it's not giving me any information about the record. You know, to save yourself time so you don't have to actually go into the record every time, right? Um, because, I mean, a lot of times you've already screened these, so you don't have to actually examine them, like, inside the record every time. You can just go with what is indexed. You can click on who it's principally about, which is Marco Sanchez, and you can tell by this record. And so if you do that, the whole layout changes, and it gives you additional information, like the birth date, the burial date, the place, you know, all that. So here I see that uh, Marco Sanchez, which is their child, died in 1849, and that's his death record, and his father and his mother is listed there along with his spouse. So that's the last bit of information that I verified and figured out, right? So I believe this line is nothing but Spaniards here, which is fine, but I'm going to show you guys what I do. So um, I begin with a search on Ancestry first, just a basic search, and to see what I'm going to run into, right? So let's see what we find. Uh, a lot of the times I'll find these records, right? Um, they'll pop up, which are relevant. Sometimes they don't, and you have to filter. Uh, right now I don't have to filter, so I'm not going to show that. But um, here we go. One method of getting further back, because I'm trying to find the parents of Ignacio Sanchez and Antonia Pedraza, right? Well, one method is finding the baptism of one of their children that'll list maternal and paternal grandparents. So let me click on this. Let me see what type of record it is. Because half the time it's marriages and those aren't going to have that type of information. So I ignore them, right? I don't waste my time on those. Unless I found a marriage specifically between Ignacio and Antonia, and then that would tell me their parents, right? In this case, it's a baptism. So let's go in there. See Josef Maria Macario, and let's look. And bear with me if there's silence because I'm just searching. I mean, again, I'm not doing any edits on this. Jose, okay, here we go. Josef Maria Macario Español. So let's see here. Josef Maria Macario Español, hijo legítimo de Ignacio Sanchez y Antonio Pedraza nació. All right, uh, saying that it's in April. Now here in this sim symbol. I believe that's like a, yeah, it's a PP, which means padrinos, right? That's not going to be his grandparents. Padrinos are not grandparents. They, they can be family members, but uh, a lot of times they are not going to be direct family members, as in like a direct ancestor of yours. So never add a padrino like that. I mean, they can just be a good indication, but it ultimately doesn't mean that uh, it's the next step in the process. So unfortunately, this doesn't really tell me much beyond the fact that he's just a Spaniard and his parents are probably Spaniards if he's a Spaniard. I'll still save under the tree. I'll show you guys how I save. So I go to the person I'm trying to save it to, right? Like if I'm trying to add a son, there's another way to do it. Like you could go to the profile and click on add family, son, and then fill out the whole thing, but that's going to take a lot of time. So I like to skip all that. I will click on the father right here and I'll save it to him and... A lot of times I have to query and search for him, right? So uh, Ignacio Sanchez, I'll click attach and see what pops up. So Ignacio Sanchez, there's his wife. I always click yes because it'll add the actual record picture to her profile. So no matter where you are researching, you'll be able to access it. It's not like it'll just be attached to the father, but then when you go to the mother's profile, it's not there. And then that just wastes your time because then you have to go to the father's profile, right? Uh, let's see. Josef Maria Macario. Sometimes it'll auto-populate somebody you already have, like another son. And um, it's not a match, clearly, in this case. These are two different people. They're, they're just siblings. So I go with create a new person, select, and then I save to the tree. 
And so that saves me a lot of time and not having to fill out extra information, blah, blah, blah. And here we go. It's right here. Easy access, right? So I just exit out of that. Uh, I exit out of here and I continue on my merry way. So I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see if possibly I can find a record where, you know, if I can find the marriage record, that would be the most optimal thing possible. But uh, see, this is a death record. This is not, this is going to be a waste of time. So a lot of these baptism, if they just say baptism instead of church record, I've noticed on Ancestry DNA, then um, they're basically just these files, which just give the film number, which essentially doesn't help me that much because I have to go plug them into family search. And I'm trying to avoid doing that at the moment because it is time consuming as hell to do it. All right. So I don't see anything else besides the records I just did in those two that aren't actually you know, you can't go into the picture. You have to do this whole other process. That's a death record. And then, and then down here, it just says Jalisco Guanajuato. And so it gets very, very like broad. Like obviously it's not my ancestors. So what I do is I have to refine it at this stage. So I go to North America and I know they're in the state of San Luis Potosí. So I click on Mexico and then I click on set. Yes. Yeah, San Luis Potosí. All right. So it'll refine it further and we'll see what we can find. So I already did that one. That's a death record. Nicolasa de Jesus. Wait, wait. Well, no, that's a wrong wife because it's supposed to be in Antonia Perales or some shit. Yeah, Pedraza. Okay, yeah. So that's not gonna be it. Uh, Antonia Pedraza. Okay, he, here we go. Let me let me see. Let's see here if if this is another baptismal. Maybe it's uh. All right. So it's a baptism from 1770. Let me let's take a let's take a glance here. Let's see Maria Andrea. I got to scan for that really fast here. Maria Josef, uh, Maria Andrea. Here we go. All right, hija legítima Ignacio Sanchez and Maria Antonia Pedraza. Let's see. I think those are. Unfortunately, those are padrinos once again, so it's not really telling me anything here that I need. I do know she's a Spaniard, so that's holding consistent. Sometimes you'll have siblings that differ, like one will be Spanish and one of them will be Mestizo. It's just because they look different. Um, the priest based this a lot off phenotype, but often people would also pay their way into a, a higher caste if they could get away with it, right? Uh, sometimes they had social connections, they had money, power, influence, or just corruption, right? And they, they would bribe to try to get a higher caste because having a higher caste did afford you uh, different rights and privileges within the Spanish Empire. That That is a fact. And, um, you know, if you don't believe me, you can read Before Mestizaje by Ben Vincent III. He goes in depth about that. And he cites numerous works like Purchasing white Whiteness by Ruth Hill, you know. So – being white and having that uh, Espanol status, which is just basically just being a white person, did have privilege back in the day. So in this case, let's see. I, I just want to compare texts here real fast, make sure I'm not misreading it, but I believe he's just saying the padrinos. I'm just comparing it to other records, right? That That's a, that's one thing you can do is if you can't understand a cursive um, marker, you know, uh, word or something, well, first of all, I recommend that you compare it to another record down below. Maybe they have a similarity in handwriting, and you can figure it out. In this case, uh, it doesn't mean abuelos paternos. That's what I was hoping it would mean. Uh, but there are certain groups like a Mexican genealogy where you can post a picture with a link. They always like it if you put a link in there, and that way people could, you know, some people can zoom in and they study it. And a lot of people that are very experienced at uh, reading that cursive we'll be able to tell you what it says. There's numerous times I've had to use them. I mean, I've gotten decent, you know, within the last year or so, but uh, by no means am I an expert. Let me see. Marriage records. Sometimes these hints will pop up for you. See, sometimes they'll pop up for you as you add records. It'll other hints will pop up. So let me see. Let me see what I got here. Okay. So this is the marriage record between him and Anton, uh, Antonia Pedraza. This is what I was looking for because it would state his parents. So I'm going to add them. Of course, now, I always add just because it's convenient now. I'm saving the record itself. I'm going to add it to my tree. You can always delete a record if you figure out if it's false, but this is most certainly going to be true. The only thing is I 
always go in and verify whatever the heck I'm adding because, I mean, this is important to do your homework. Uh, and, but one thing I do real fast is I like to check the suggested records because right here there's a no image text only collection, right? Well, that shit's annoying because I want to just be able to click and fucking go see the image, right? So I'll click on these suggested records and it'll possibly, possibly like pull up one that's, and in this case it didn't. But sometimes there's some uh, on Ancestry DNA, they'll, it's weird. They'll have duplicated records with some that are text only and then some that are not. So um, that's what I just saw. Well, where's, there's one more thing. I, I can, so I don't have to actually go to the film number and then find it. Cause that, that's very time consuming. My, my bad. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about something else guys. So I, I have an answer to the name. Um, Ignacio Zapata. He's actually like my second great grandfather, but that's not who I'm trying to put on here. And let's see. Antonia Pedraza. So I'm going to family search the rec, uh, you know, just the record search. And I always narrow it by putting the country and the state in Mexico. There's a chance they could have it indexed with just the image. So I don't have to actually go look at this. Let me see. Oh shit. I, yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not there guys. Fuck. All right. Well, in that case, here's what you'll do. You'll click on check image availability and it'll take you directly in there. That's kind of a shortcut without having to do the copy and paste into the catalog section on family search, but you know, you can do any of that. So let's see, I'm going to have this handy. I'll have this pulled out. I like to close my windows because I feel like, you know, sometimes I'll feel like it's getting too cluttered and then I start panicking. All right. So 1762. So let's take a glance here. I always take a glance at these right here because it'll let you know what, what the section is for. Right. A lot of, there's a lot of, in these films, it's not just one book, but it's multiple books often. So you want to check and see what it is here. Let's see. 1693. That's no good. That's way far off. I'm gonna check here. I don't. Uh, Family Search is acting weird, I guess, because they're doing some updating. I don't know if they're gonna not let me check the images. Hopefully, hopefully they do. But either way, I added it, so if it does, and I can always come back to it. Let's see. I'm trying to get to the range 1762. Well, see, this is what's uh, weird is that their child was a. Uh, their children are Spaniards, so they should be Spaniards, but it's saying matrimonio de castas. I mean, a lot of times you'll still have Spaniards and matrimonios de castas, but a lot of the times they'll separate that into a whole other film. It'll be matrimonios de españoles because they're in a whole separate book. Um, you know, certain places the priests would actually separate that. They wouldn't all put it in one book. Here we go. On uh, So the year 1751, 1773, well, this falls in there. So I'm going to – so basically what I do is I know it's in this section – I click on a random point and I read the date and I try to, you know, I literally try to find this right by getting closer and I have to skip pages and, and all that. So let's see here. That's 59. So that's not, that's not good enough. I'll probably skip two rows down here and we'll take another look here. 62. All right. Perfect. So what month was this? 30, 30th of June. This is in February, so I'm going to skip four pages. I'm just guessing here. You don't have to follow my rules here. Um, Sente tres. I think I skipped way too far. Too far. Sometimes this will happen. It'll surprise you that there's not that many pages of records in a place. So, eight of November. Yeah. So it really jumped up very, very high, very, very fast. 3rd of September. Yeah, that's very fast. All right. Well, that's already May. Let me see. It's 21 of May. Um, 19 of August. That's too late. 30th. Yeah, Jose Ignacio and Maria Antonia. Yeah, that should be it. So let's take a glance here and see what it's going to tell me. So... Maria Antonia Pedraza, right? Española, so she's a Spaniard from this jurisdiction. I can't read literally every word. A lot of 
but a lot of times you don't have to because it's just church jargon, right? Hija legítima de Rafael Antonio and Pedraza and Marcela del Carrillo. Okay, so here's what I do. I, co um, I copy the link here. I'm going to exit out of here. Go back to the marriage section. And I click Control-V to save the link. Okay, so that way I can visit it at any time. I don't have to do that work all again. I'm going to go with Antonia Pedraza. And I'm going to add her parents. Uh, well, and the fact that I verified this, I mean, you can always, like, just check here to make, you know, check after, like, what did they index, right? And what did you read? And all that stuff matches. So Rafael Antonio de Pedraza, right? Rafael. I think it's Antonio, to be honest. Not Yeah, Antonio de Pedraza, yeah. I'm not going to put day. I mean, it, it kind of clutters the search engine. It's not when, you know, try to avoid Dell or day. It's not really that significant to put on there. Marcela del Carrillo. In this case, it might be beneficial, but if it's like, it, you just have, I, I'm struggling to understand, uh, like not to understand it, my bad. Struggling to explain it. There's just certain cases where it's completely unnecessary. Like if they have two names, like two last names already, and um, then it has a day or something. It's just kind of irrelevant. It, you know, but if they only have one last name, then I would say, yeah, go ahead and put in the Dell or day or whatever. Right. But if they already have two last names like him and I just put day present, it's just clutters the whole thing. So it's just not, it's not good. So let me just verify his dad is Jose Sanchez Maria de los Nieves. So let me, let me just read his stuff. I'll see. So Ignacio Sanchez, mestizo, all right, natural de León, Covenezena. Like a lot of these little towns and pueblos are gone. So you have to reference a uh, or check an old map from San Luis Potosí like in the 1800s. And you can just search that in like for whatever state you're in, like 1800s map of so-and-so. Um, I haven't really seen many 1700s maps. The best is the 1800s. But a lot of times those pueblos are still there. So it can help you. So let's see. He's a mestizo. And Jose Sanchez... Maria de las Nieves. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's really the most, see that that's the thing. What you really have to take away from these records is you can scam and scan for different information, but the biggest things, you know, you don't have to be very fluent in Spanish. You just need to know the date. You just need to know the location that it's saying, right? You need to be able to read the person, the fact that they are a legitimate daughter or son or a natural son or daughter, which natural just all that means is that they that they were not the parents were not married when they had the kid. Okay. That's what natural means. So you know you can that way you can add the next step and you can continue tracing. So that's really all you need in the cast label. You need to be able to read that. All this other stuff is just stuff like that, you know, the witnesses appeared there they saw them, they knew them, you know, they signed, they, they put down the padrinos, you know, uh, they, you know, up here is just, you know, it's just a huge formal introduction about where it took place and who, you know, the time, sometimes it talks about like festivities, like of like the Catholic church or some shit. So right here, yeah, Valley de Arisma or something like that. So, so sometimes it gets hard to read this cursive. Uh, but yeah, that's just generally that's all you need. You don't have to literally sit here and translate the entire record. No, you, you know, pick out your information that you need that's pertinent and move along. So I got his cast label. I already have these tags. You can create a custom tag, but I just do this to keep track easy. He's Mestizo. And then Antonia Pedraza is, um, you guys are going to roast up because like I was too lazy to get the Enya sound or symbol. So I just put Espanol. <laughs> You guys are going to think that's dumb as fuck. But I never bothered. <laughs> I can't edit it. I don't think I have to delete the whole tag, which I don't feel like doing at this point. So, all right. So I, I, I added a whole other set of parents. I showed you guys how to do that, right? So I, oh here, I like to use the pedigree view. Like the other view, this one, family tree view, is just so confusing to me. I don't know how anybody does it like that. Bam. Um, I don't know why in the hell it puts them in as living. I didn't do that on purpose. A lot of times the system just auto populate something nonsensical like that. So I just correct it. All right. And then, you know, I would do the same thing. I would just essentially trace back the same way 
uh, repeating the same exact steps, right? So a couple things is um, you saw how I filtered things, right? You saw the suggested records. I mean, I do the same thing over here. If I'm if I'm searching for a record on Family Search and I find, um, you know, I'll click on it and I'll go to the suggested record section. Um, I'll show you guys how that looks actually. So let me see here. Uh, and what the hell? I'll just go ahead and do this. Jose Sanchez. More options. They changed the layout. It used to be much better, but like, but this change in layout is so annoying. Maria de los Nieves. Okay, location, Mexico. Same as to see. Let me see what pops up here. Okay. So the marriage that I just looked popped up here. Maria Dioncia de los Dolores, that's not going to be it. Some things are indexed on Family Search, I mean, on Ancestry DNA that are not on Family Search. That's why I highly recommend purchasing the membership. But uh, if you click on View Record, you know, I always open this stuff in another tab. Then you're able to see this stuff. So, Jose Ignacio Sanchez, you, you see all this, right? All this information. Well, you have your similar records over here, right? And you can, you can check it. They, they, it's so confusing. You used to be not confusing at all, but oh, you look at over here, this right hand column and you're able to see what's going on here. So. All right. That's really weird. So I guess he had a mother with a similar name as his spouse. That is so weird. Yeah, that is extremely weird. Okay. Maria de los Nieves. I mean, it can happen for sure. Okay, yeah, no, I was just reading this wrong. That they had another son named Jose Ignacio Sanchez, like he did, right? His name's Jose Sanchez. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> I apologize, guys. Sometimes it's easy to get lost in this. So I would have to go find this. Maybe the 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 baptism would have the grandparents uh, it's possible but i like to go for the marriage records and then a lot of times you'll find these trees again don't always just automatically add everything you see in a tree you have to verify by seeing how they got to that portion um so okay this is interesting because and i'll tell you why i actually have traced to these two people in a line before i actually did that but on another branch. So it's really interesting to see this coming back to these two, Cristobal Sanchez and Petra Hernandez again. So that's really interesting. But see, right here it's telling me they were where they were married, 1726. So I can usually find the uh, index record for it. So let me look for 1726. Like if it if there's a record here. Yeah, okay. Maria de las Nieves. Maria de los Nieves. Yeah, so it, it, it's it's them, and then it's an armadillo. So, so this is perfect, right? Maria de las Nieves. So I can, therefore, start tracing this back. Unfortunately, it seems like his spouse was an hija natural, so illegitimate daughter, and so her mom's name was just Francisca. But I'm going to see what this leads to. And... Uh, yeah, but I pretty much just wanted to show you guys just a quick way or, you know, just quickly how to do this and, and the steps I take. I mean, obviously, this isn't all my knowledge, but this is just like fresh, like as in like I didn't stage this at all. This is just me researching off a point that I was going to do anyways, right? So hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys learned something. You got questions, drop it in the comments. Feel free to share this video. It'll help other people. And um if you guys want me to do a live video, maybe where you ask me questions on this, then for sure, maybe I could research some of your lines. However, I would say <laughs> uh, if you want me to research your line on a live, I can, but you need to be a Mexican for that because uh, records are hardly indexed like for other people, like uh, the other countries. I mean, they're, they, they can be, but they're hardly indexed. So it's a huge headache and I'm probably not going to find anything if you're like, let's say from... Um, Venezuela or Nicaragua. So I'm not going to find anything. There's not an index online usually, right? Uh, so Mexican, and preferably somebody that has their parents or their grandparents or great grandparents. And they know that information that were born in Mexico, right? Because if you've been in the U S for many generations, well, the U S sucks at record keeping. 
a lot. So it it's, uh, takes a hell of a lot more work to trace back. It's a lot more complicated, and I got less experience on that front. But I've still been able to do it for other people. Anyways, thank you guys. Hope you enjoy this. Peace out.